Hello guys. Welcome back to Top 5 Choices. In this video we are going to do a detailed review and pick the top 5 cameras for YouTube. So let us get started at the review based on our studies and small research. If you have any personal suggestion do let us know in the comment section. If you are for the first time don't forget to subscribe and click on the bell icon for more videos. We will be also providing affiliates link to purchase from Amazon. Kindly use to for best offers and purchase from anywhere in the world. So let's get started. The ZV-1 is a small camera, just 2.4 by 4.2 by 1.7 inches and 10.4 ounces. Its lens doesn't completely retract into the body, it juts out a little bit, but it's compact enough for most pockets. Sony has opted for a composite material for the body, a departure from the metal exterior used by the RX100 series. It's a fine change if you ask me, the body feels solid and the finish is likely to hold up better over time. There's still a bit of metal around the lens, giving it a little extra protection. The ZV-1 also includes a small hand grip, something missing from the RX100 family. Unfortunately, it's not a great grip. If anything, it makes the camera less comfortable to handhold in most situations, though I did appreciate it for selfie shots and vlogs. I recommend adding the GPVPT2BT wireless shooting grip. The $150 add-on attaches via the camera tripod socket and communicates with the ZV-1 via Bluetooth. It doubles as a handheld pistol grip and a tablet op tripod. The ZV-1 is more comfortable to use with the grip attached. It includes basic controls, too buttons to snap photos and start and stop video recording, the customizable C1, and a zoom rocker. There's also a lock switch, so you can disable controls as desired. The ZV-1 has more control buttons and options than you find on the grip itself. The top plate houses the on-off, mode, record, and C1 buttons, as well as the shutter release and zoom rocker. The hot shoe and built-in mic are also up top, if you use the included windscreen to protect the mic. The on-off button is visually obscured, but still accessible. The EOS M6 Mark II comes with a price tag that's decidedly not entry level, just $50 less than the Sony A6400 or Fujifilm X-T30, two cameras that are all but equal, and are editor's choices for shoppers looking in this price range. But it's missing one big feature offered by the competition, a built-in viewfinder, a design choice I think is a misstep. You can add an external viewfinder, but it's a bit of a clumsy solution that makes the whole thing bigger than it would be if one was in the body. Even without an if, the M6 isn't notably smaller than competing models that include one. It measures 2.8 by 4.7 by 1.9 inches without a lens attached, and weighs 14.4 ounces compare that with the A6400 and X-T30 3.3 by 4.7 by 1.8 inches, 13.5 ounces. The M6 Mark II is a compact camera, but it's one that feels very good in the hand. The hand grip isn't quite as deep as I'd want when pairing with the big lens, but to date every FM lens has been positively svelte. It's something to consider if you're a Canon SLR owner thinking about using your existing lenses via the FUSM adapter. I used the camera with the IF attached when working handheld, but took it off and relied on the rear LCD when seeing how the body handles on a tripod. I love the tilting design of the LCD, and its touch interface. The IF DC2 doesn't offer tilt adjustment. The IF DC1 does, and it works with the M6. But its tech is older, it uses an LCD panel, rather than the DC2 single quote s old, which isn't good for tracking fast action. The Geosmo Pocket is the camera gimbal you'll be able to take anywhere and actually want to take anywhere thanks to its tiny size and superb video quality. Its 4K 60fps capable camera and one shaped gimbal handle is no bigger than a fun size kanji bar. It measures 121.9x 36.9x 28.6mm and weighs 116 grams, about half the length and width an iPhone 11 Pro smartphone and two thirds of the weight. We were able to slip it into our jeans pockets right next to our iPhone 11 Pro Max without a problem. It's not just small, it's one hand friendly, too, with a non-slip, sweat-proof grip. That makes it easy to operate the embedded 1-inch touchscreen, which is used to cycle through modes and settings. In effect, we found it to be more mobile than the also likable Geosmo Mobile 3, even with the Mobile 3 single quote s new collapsible feature. 
It's almost a miniaturized version of the Geosmo 2. The Lumix GH5S isn't too different from the GH5 in terms of design. The layout of the buttons is pretty much the same as on last year's model. There's a healthy selection of six programmable FN buttons all around the camera, plus you can assign shortcuts to the control dial at the back, and even add some more to the right side of the on-screen menu. The body doesn't feel too heavy by itself, but snap on a lens, and it does get bulky. We really like the grip that the GH5S offers. The hand grip is quite thick with ample rubber cladding, so even those with large hands will find it comfortable to hold. The shutter button lines up well with your index finger, and has reassuring half and full press feedback. There are dials on the top and the back of the camera for changing settings when shooting. The GH5S also has a joystick for flipping through photos in playback mode or adjusting the focus area. On the top of the camera, we have chunky dials for the drive mode and shooting mode. The latter can be locked into position so you don't accidentally turn it when shooting. The arrangement of the drive modes is the same as on a GH5, but it should be noted that the GH5S offers 4K burst shooting versus 6K on a GH5, due to its lower resolution sensor. There's no built-in flash but there is a hot shoe for attaching an external one. You get an old electronic viewfinder, which delivers a 100% field of view. A sensor lets you automatically switch between the LCD screen and the IF by bringing the camera to your eye. The IF's 3.6 million dot resolution produces really crisp images, and you can opt for a 120 FPS refresh rate rather than the default 60 FPS, for more fluid motion. The G7X Mark III comes in at 2.4 by 4.1 by 1.6 inches and 10.7 ounces it's small enough to slide into my pocket comfortably, even though it's thicker than a phone. Materials are a mix of plastic and metal. It's not quite as solid feeling as the G5X, which uses metal in places the G7 doesn't, including the top plate and exterior chassis. But the G7 does have a decent hand grip, one that I like better than the flat front used by Sony in its RX103. The zoom lens falls in between the RX103 and G5X in coverage. It's a 24-100mm f1.8-2.8 design, a bit longer than the 24-70mm f1.8-2.8 in Sony's similar camera, but shy of the G5X Mark II's 24-120mm f1.8-2.8 range. In practical terms, there's not a huge difference in reach, but the longer zooms can net a bit blur your background when zoomed all the way in. The G7 puts a control ring around the lens itself. It can be used as shutter or aperture control, depending on the mode, but you can reprogram it to perform other functions, including zoom control, ISO adjustment, and EVE compensation.